live. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my God. We are live. Hey everyone. Let's wait a couple of seconds so we can start. Let me change the layout here. There you go. Let's wait a couple of seconds. Hey there. When you arrive here, make sure to send hi, hello in the comment section. All right. So I can see you here. Come join us. Are you guys excited? The time now is something o'clock. Depends on where you are. <laughs> All right, guys. I see that we have nine people here already. Let's wait a couple of minutes so more people can come and join us so we can study adjectives together. 13 people, 15 people. Come on, guys. If you come here, if you arrive, make sure to comment. Hi. Hello. How are you? Interact with us. I'm saying interact with us because I'm not alone here. I have Fabio. Fabio is here with me. Uh, Fabio is part of our team. And we also have Adri. Oh, good. Now I can see you guys. Hello. Hi, many people. Perfect. Now I can see you. We have a delay. So when I talk to you guys, um, I talk to you and then after a couple of seconds, I start seeing your answers. Very good. Well, if you're here, tell me, where are you from? Where are you from? I want to know. And while you guys are commenting, let me introduce myself. My name is Paula. I'm one of your English teachers here at Fluency Academy. Fluency Academy is one of the biggest language schools um, in South America. And now we are expanding and we are about to become one of the biggest, the greatest language schools, English schools in the world. And I'm so happy that you guys are part of it. We have some people from the Philippines, Brazil, Middle East. Uh, no, yeah, Philippines, Indonesia. Wow, great. Welcome, everyone. It's so nice to have you all here. Um, while we have some people arriving, settling down, grabbing a pen and a paper, let me uh, let me tell you that we have a material for you a free material that's available for download. Fabio, can you please put the link um, on the chat so people can see it? You're going to see, guys, that a link will appear in the comment section. This link is for free material for you guys to download. It's a free ebook talking about adjectives. So it's a complement for what we're going to see here. Okay. And of course, do not forget to visit our portal. We have a website, Fluency TV. Um, I think we can also send the link, right? Send the link, please, guys, Fabu or Adri, so they can access. We have a lot of free content for you guys to study English. We have videos, we have podcasts, we have articles, we have free ebooks for you to download recorded by me and by all my other friends that work together at Fluency Academy. So this, oh, right here, this is the beginning of your journey towards fluency. So if you're excited, if you set your mind to it, I'm going to learn English, I'm going to be fluent. This is your first step. Okay. Oh my God, are you ready? Shall we begin? We have 50 people with us. I think it's time for us to begin. We're going to be talking about adjectives today. Okay, so what are adjectives and when to use them? This is going to be an overview of what they are and how they are used. I'm going to give you examples. I'm going to give you sentences to practice. And of course, don't forget, we also have an extra material for you to download. Okay, starting with the basics, 
Adjectives are words that describe people, places, animals, things, or even ideas. So if you want to have um, a more detailed speech, if you want to sound more natural, you want to add adjectives to what you're saying. We have three examples to start with right here. Check it out. He bought a new car. He bought a new car. The word new is highlighted because it's describing the word car. It's not a regular car. It's not just any car. It's a new car. It's not old. It's a new car. If you're watching this, make sure to repeat the sentences after me, okay? So you are at home right now or maybe, I don't know, at work. <laughs> if you are at work, don't do it because your boss is going to find out that you're studying. <laughs> but if you're at home, make sure to repeat out loud, okay? So I say it and then you say it. He bought a new car. He bought a new car. Perfect. Second example we have. New York is a busy city. New York is a busy city. We are describing what kind of city New York is. New York is a big city. It's a loud city. It's a busy city. It's not quiet like a village. No, it's busy. So there you go. The word busy is describing it. Um, let me just uh, mute my computer audios right here. Yeah. Have you guys ever visited New York? Have you ever been to New York or the USA? Let me know. Comment. Comment below. I want to know if you have visited New York in your life or if you plan to visit New York in the future. Maybe that's the reason why you are learning English. I don't know. Let me know. Kai said like a loud place. Got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. A loud place. A busy city. Big cities are usually very loud, right? Chaotic. Chaotic is another adjective. Adjective. Many cars, many buildings, many people walking. It's a busy place. Someone said they visited a beach in Philippines. Then it's not busy, right? When you go to the beach, it's not busy. I said, not yet, but I've been to London. I am reading your comments, okay? I'm reading the comments. Uh, not yet in New York. Zanel said, uh, yes. Alicia said, I haven't visited New York yet. Make sure to use yet, okay? I have plans. All right, people are planning. I would like to visit it again. Great. Oh, and the last example we have here to start with is she has a black cat. If I said, imagine I say, oh, this is my friend and she has a cat. This is not very specific, is it? This is my friend. She has a cat. All right. Give me more information. Give me more details. Then I can say she has a black cat. She has a big cat. She has a lovely cat. You see, black cat big, lovely. These words, these adjectives, they have different, um, they are in different categories, right? I want to serve, okay. I have a dog named Dagu. Am I pronouncing it right? I have a dog named Dagu. You can say, I have a beautiful dog. I have a nice dog. You see how when we use adjectives, our sentences are more, uh, are, are richer. You know what I mean? They're not simple sentences. I am being more specific in my speech. That's why it's so important to learn adjectives and to learn how to use them, okay? Someone said, I wanted to be fluent as you are. If you want to be fluent like me, uh, I don't know if I said that before, but English is not my first language. Maybe a couple of you, uh, maybe you noticed that because of my, uh, because of my accent. I'm from Brazil. English is not my first language. So I know what it feels like to try to learn a new language. It's challenging. It's not easy. But if you find the right teachers, if you find, if you find the right method, it can become so uh, easier. It can run smooth, you know. 
And that's why I'm here to help you guys along with Fluency Academy to help you achieve that goal. Okay. I have a cute dog. Very good. I have a cute dog. I want to visit. I want to visit New York in the future. Very good. Paula has blonde hair. <laughs> Very good. This is nice. When you try to come up with new sentences, right, Mark? Perfect. So you learn new words and right away you try to use them in a sentence. Great. Great one. Let's move on to where. Where is the adjective in the sentence? You can either place it or put it before the noun. It's, it is modifying. Or you can place it after the verb to be. Um, examples. Check it out. The cat is black. So we can use the adjective um, after verb to be. The cat is black. The cat is lovely. The cat is cute. Or you can use the adjective, the word you are using to describe something, before the name of the object. This is very important because um, in some languages, this is not the order we use. I told you guys, I'm from Brazil. I speak Portuguese. And in Portuguese, we don't use this order. So this is important, okay? We don't say cat black. We say black cat. We don't say a, uh, a book blue. No, we say blue book. So the characteristic comes before the name of the thing. Don't worry, we have more examples, okay? Different categories of adjectives. Like I said, um, adjectives are, are different because they can describe different things. They can communicate our opinion. They can communicate the size or the shape of something, the age of something, the color of something. Do you notice the difference when I say, for example, this book right here? This is a good book. What kind of adjective is good? Can you tell me? If I say this is a good book, the word good, the adjective good, is it a size? Is it a color? What kind of adjective it, adjective it is? Tongue twister, adjective it is. The cat is very, very good. Let me know, guys. Good, good, good. Let me wait for the delay to happen. What kind of adjective it is? Adri said something interesting. Mm, Anna. Good. Mm, I'm not sure if good is a color, though. I can say this. It's blue. Then it's a color. But if I say it's good, it's my opinion. It's my opinion. I can say it's good, but maybe Freddie or Samuel, maybe they think it's bad. It's my personal opinion. What if I say this is big? This is a big book. What kind of adjective is big? It's not my opinion anymore because it's pretty clear that it's big, right? Big. That's all right, Mark. Don't worry. We're all learning together. Natalie, very good. Yes, this is the size of the book. See, it's a good book. It's a blue book. It's a big book. I use three words to describe it, and each one of them is a different category. Okay? And now we're going to talk about something really interesting. Fasten your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelt. Focus. There is a certain order of adjectives we have to use. Did you know that? Have you ever heard of a character from a from a kid's book, from a child book, called the Big Bad Wolf? Yeah, are you familiar with it? If you are, just comment, yeah. The Big Bad Wolf. The wolf is a character from... I forgot the name of the story. <laughs> I forgot the name of the story, but it's a kid's book. And the, this character, the wolf, is bad. And it is also um, big. So when we are describing this character, we say the big bad 
wolf. We don't say the the bad, the big bad. What am I talking about? I'm saying that there is a certain order of adjectives. So when you use two or three or four different adjectives to describe something, there is a certain order to follow. And the order, my friends, is right here. The first thing you say is your opinion, then your size, then the age, then the shape. Um, let me think of another example before I, I show you guys a big one. Uh, Alicia has said, I've heard of it. Are you familiar with it? No? Yeah, there's a certain order. Exactly. For example, uh, a beautiful old house. Oh my God, look at that house. It's a beautiful old house. Beautiful, my opinion. First thing, my opinion. A beautiful old is the age, right? Not new. It's old. So I wouldn't say, uh, look at that house. It's a old, beautiful, old, beautiful doesn't sound natural, but beautiful old sounds more natural. Before I show you another example, uh, I just want to let you guys know that if you use the wrong order of adjectives, it's not a big problem. Okay, it's not a big problem. English speakers will understand you if you use a different order. Uh, the matter here, the important thing is you are communicating the same thing. It's just that certain orders sound more natural. You understand? It's not a huge mistake if you use a different order, but there's a, there's a certain order that sounds more natural. Let me show you. Let's describe this vase can you see it it's a beautiful vase with flowers in it important things oh something important about the word vase vase a recipient where you can put flowers in it it has two different pronunciations you can say vase or you can say vase okay you choose it's up to you whatever it works for you vase or vase okay by the way, this is the difference between American pronunciation, North American pronunciation, and uh, English pronunciation, British pronunciation. By the way, what's your mother tongue? Can you guys tell me what's your native language? My native language is Portuguese. What about yours? I want to know. What's your native language? leave in the comment section okay i want to know this is something that i'm fascinated about vietnamese great spanish ukrainian nice isn't it french oh my god isn't it nice that we have different people from different countries um turkish see and all of us are doing the same thing right now we're all connected online studying uh English, which is our bridge. Did you know that English is considered a bridge language? We call it a bridge because it connects people from different countries. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? Or am I the only one who's getting emotional? Because how will I talk to people from different countries if we don't have something in common? So English is that something in common we have. English is what connects us. Brazilian Portuguese, very good. Oh, yeah, because we have European Portuguese, right? Great. That's very nice to hear, to, he to hear, not to hear, but to read. <laughs> nice, guys. Now, let's analyze this sentence. I'm describing this face, right? It's a beautiful, small, old, round, pink, glass flower vase. Jesus Christ. Beautiful, small, old, round, pink, glass, flower vase. We have seven adjectives and they are put together in the sentence in the right order. Beautiful. What kind of adjective it is? 
What kind of adjective is, is beautiful? Is it the size, the age? Is it my opinion? Opinion, perfect, yeah. I think it's beautiful, but maybe you don't. What about small? What kind of adjective is small? Is it my opinion? The fact that the vase is small, is it my opinion? Shape, maybe not the shape, but the size. Exactly, size. Very good, Anna. It's the size, it could be big, but it's small. Old. Come on, guys, come on, come on, come on, you can do it. What kind of adjective is old? Is it my opinion? If this vase is uh, 70 years old, is it my opinion or is it a fact? It's not my opinion, it's a fact. It's the age. Very good, it's the age. Now, round. What kind of adjective is round? Can you guys help me out with this one? Round, not square, not square. It's not a triangle, it's round. It's not my opinion. I can see it, everyone can see it. It's the shape, very good, perfect. We can go on for hours, but my point is, notice that we are following this order. It's a beautiful, uh, small, old, round, pink, glass. Now, let me show you right here. This is the example, the analysis of the sentence, okay? Beautiful, small, old, round, pink, glass, flower vase. Beautiful is my opinion. Small is the size old is the age round is the shape pink is the color glass is the material it could be paper plastic but it's glass and flower is the purpose generally we leave purpose uh at the end of the sentence okay it's the last thing you communicate why is flower the purpose i don't understand why is flower the purpose because I bought a vase and the purpose is to put flowers in it, not other things. So that's why I'm saying that flower is the purpose. I bought this vase for a specific reason, for me to put flowers in it, okay? So these are the categories and this is the right order to follow. Someone said, teacher, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm explaining, I'm explaining that in English, when you are describing something using more than one adjective, uh, you have to follow a certain order. Now I'm saying you have to follow, but remember I told you guys that if you um, use a different order, it doesn't matter. You will communicate the same idea. The only problem little snag we hear we have here is that maybe you're not going to sound very natural okay someone asked me isn't it supposed to be uh floral instead of flower yeah can i use floral instead in this case we cannot use floral instead floral would be if the vase had flowers on it like a print then we would say floral, but flower is the name of something, is not an adjective, I agree with you, but we are using it as an adjective. Don't worry, I'm gonna give you more examples about it, okay? It's gonna be clearer. Let me show you what we have next here. There you go. How to identify adjectives. Adjectives can come in different forms. Nouns. Do you guys know what is a noun? what a noun is, I'm sorry. Do you guys know what a noun is? Can you try to, to explain to your fellow students uh, what's a noun? Can you tell me? Oh my God, I forgot my water bottle. Now my mouth is super dry. <laughs> ah, I need water.
Perfect. What are nouns? Mark said name of place or thing. Great. Uh, names of people, place, things, animals. Very good. Wow, check it out. Perfect. Noun is the name of something, name of a person, name of a place, name of a thing. Not necessarily a word we use to describe something. Okay? Flower, for example. Flower is a noun. Let me show you. Beautiful. Hold on. It's an adjective. So the word flower is a noun and the word beautiful is an adjective. That's why I can say a beautiful flower, right? A beautiful flower. I'm using the word beautiful to describe the flower. But, however, we can use a noun as an adjective. Flower is a noun, but if I say it's a flower vase, it's a flower vase, it's a, va it's a vase to put flowers in it, or it's a beautiful vase. So I can use these two words to describe something. In this case, the word flower becomes an adjective as well. A beautiful vase, a flower vase or a beautiful flower vase. <laughs> Do you see what's going on? A beautiful flower vase. I'm using two words to describe the vase. This is not um, mathematics. This is communication, okay? It's not, bec it's not just because a word is categorized as a noun that I can't use it as an adjective. Of course I can. In English, we can use words uh, for different functions, for example, um, the word mm, Friday. I like this example. Friday. Friday is a noun. It's the name of a specific day of the week, right? Friday. Um, I don't care. I can use Friday as a verb. I can use Friday as a verb. Today, I'm going to Friday so hard. <laughs> If today were Friday, I could say, oh my God, it's Friday, and today I want a Friday. What does it mean? It means that I want to enjoy Friday. I want to do things that people normally do on Fridays, okay? So when the, th when the, the topic is communication, language, we can play with words, all right? Water bottle is a noun, exactly. Let's move on. Oops, this is not right. This is right. Car. Car is a noun. But what if I say car race? Car is a noun. This is a car. But if I say car race, I'm using the word car to describe what kind of race I'm talking about. It could be a horse race. Do you guys know what is a race? When people are competing to see um, who's faster, right? A car race, a horse race. I'm using the word car and the word horse as adjectives. Another example. We can use suffix to create adjectives. Joyful, endless, glamorous, sunny. Joyful comes from the word joy. Endless comes from the word end. Glamorous comes from the word glamour. Sunny comes from the word sun. So this is something I can do in English. I can grab a word, add extra letters, add a suffix. Am I pronouncing it right? Suffix? I think I am. Um, and I create a new kind of word. Joy is a word. Joyful is an adjective. And is a word. Endless is a new word that's an adjective as well. Let me show you how we use this extra letters we are adding to the word. 
when we create a new adjective with the word full, we use it to show that something or someone is full of something. Therefore, the child is full of joy. Repeat after me. The child is joyful. Perfect. Wonder. Wonderful. I'm so proud of you guys. Wonder is a noun. Wonderful is an adjective. Perfect. The child is joyful. It means the child is full of joy. Okay. Guys, easier than that. Think. Beautiful. Beautiful. It means that person is full of beauty. Right? Beauty, beautiful. Wonder, wonderful. Joy, joyful. Full of something. Now, less. When we add the word less, the suffix less, we are showing that something or someone lacks something. The flight seemed endless. Repeat with me, please. The flight, the flight seemed endless. It means that the flight, uh, I, I felt like the flight had no end. It was taking forever. Endless. Without end. You can interpret the word less as without. Roma, Roma said careless. Perfect. Careless without care. Okay. Careless without care. Homeless without a home. Homeless without a home. Helpless. There's no way we can make it work. It's helpless. Very good. Speechless without words, without speech. Very good. It's like the opposite of full. That's why we have useful and useless. Two different adjectives with two different endings. I'm going to write it down. Check it out. Useful and useless. Useful, something that is um, very helpful, right? It has many uses, like a pen. A pen is very useful. Now, can you say something that is useless? Can you say something that's useless? I gave you guys an example of something useful. Now you guys gave me something uh, as an example of useless. Jobless from the word job. Very good. You guys are asking about different types of, uh, of endings. Don't worry, we're going to talk about them, okay? Garbage. Very good. Garbage is not useful. It's useless. It's without a use. Very good. Let's move on. Wasting time is useless. Exactly. Perfect. Wasting time is useless. Moving on to us. Us. Oh, attention to the pronunciation. We don't say glamorous. We say glamorous. Us. When we put us before a noun, we are creating an adjective that demonstrate a characteristic of some someone or something. The glamorous celebrity walked elegantly. Wow. It means that that person has glamour. Glamour is one of the things you think of when you see that person. So that person is glamorous. Fabulous. Perfect. It's useless to learn English without teacher Paula. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you so much. Humorous with humor. Perfect. You guys are killing it. Perfect. Very good. Um, what else? I forgot my wallet, so it's useless to pay my order. Yeah. In that case, I would say impossible. If you forgot your wallet, it's impossible to pay, right? Monotonous. Very good. That's it, guys. When you put us, you are creating a new adjective to indicate that that person or that thing has 
that characteristic. Very good. You guys were asking about this one, right? I can also use the word, the letter Y, okay, to characterize something. Sunny, rainy, windy, we use it a lot to talk about uh, climate, right? The sunny weather in California is my favorite type of climate. The sunny weather, the weather that contains sun, the weather that has sun, the sunny weather. If if it was like a, a day with a lot of rain, I would say a rainy day, a sunny day, okay? Funny, maybe, maybe. Does funny comes from fun? I don't think so. Fun and funny are two different characteristics. Tasty, something with a lot of taste is tasty. A day with a lot of sun is sunny right guys this is something important that i have to tell to talk to you guys about this is very important when you have a word with the suffix li like um oh my god i ran out of examples let me think let me think oh yeah like, for example, slowly, slowly, slowly is not an adjective. Slow is an adjective. So you can also modify adjectives so they can become adverbs. What does it mean? Adverbs is something that describe an action, an action, not a person, not a thing, not a place, an action. He drives slowly. He drives slowly. I'm using the word slow. That's an adjective. And I'm using it to describe the action of driving. So it's not an adjective anymore. It's an adverb. But this is something we can talk about maybe next time. What do you think? Maybe next time we can talk about the difference between adjectives and adverbs. This would be interesting, right? I think it would be interesting. What do we have now? All, all is another example. This salad is seasonal. You can only order it during the summer. So all shows what someone or something is related to. Therefore, the ability to order the salad is related to the season. I can only order this salad on a certain season. So the salad is seasonal. If this is too much information, too much, um, um, too many details, too many examples, do not forget that we have a free ebook for you to download. Fabio, can you put the link again on our on our comment section? Guys, you can download a material that's very uh, detailed with many examples to reinforce this class, okay? To reinforce this class. Emotional related to emotion. Functional related to function. Very good. You guys rock. You guys are better than me. Oh my God, so many examples. Great. Oh my God, spoiler alert. I mentioned the ebook before showing this. Ta da! We have a free ebook. <laughs> we had so many examples, right? We talked about order of adjectives, categories of adjectives, different uh, suffix to identify what that adjective is describing. <laughs> The ebook is amazing. Yes, it is. Amazing is another kind of adjective ending in ing. It comes from amaze. When something amazes you, amazes you, it's amazing. When something surprises you, it's surprising. That's another example of adjectives. 
Too bad we don't have enough time to talk about all the, the things we need to talk about. We have to talk about adjectives, but this was just the beginning, okay? This is our first live class, and I hope you guys have learned something interesting today. Interesting is another adjective. If you learned something new, if this class helped you, let me know. Comment, please. Let me see your comments. Like, this class helped me a lot, or I learned something new. This class was helpful, useful, or useless? What do you think? Useful or useless? If you think the class was useful, useful, wonderful, <laughs> beautiful, do not forget to follow us on social media, okay? We have um, TikTok, Instagram. We are on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You're going to find us everywhere spreading free content for you guys, okay? Uh, we're also on Spotify because we have podcasts for you to learn English for free as well. If you're interested in studying with us to taking an English course from the beginning, okay, starting with a simple dialogue, simple conversation, simple words, and going to the advanced level, moving towards fluency, you can enroll in our English course, okay? If you're interested, you have you can um, register on our wait list. Fabio, can you send the link to our wait list? We have a wait list because um, we are going to... Where am I? Where am I? We have a wait list. So as soon as we start our course, uh, you're going to be... Um, informed on your email address. So you can click the link to our wait list and put your name, maybe your phone number, your email, and we'll let you know as soon as you can enroll with us and study with our team, okay, at Fluency Academy. Where is the podcast? You can search for Fluency TV English, and you're going to find us, okay? So functional friendly. Very good. Guys, it was amazing to have you here with us. I hoped this was useful and helpful. And uh, I'll see you next time. Don't forget to download our ebook and don't forget to subscribe to our waitlist. And I'll see you next time.